Hello everybody and welcome to the BU podcast. My name is Jess and this episode is all about our bridging course that we have here at the university and I'm here with two lovely guests. If you'd like to introduce yourselves, please. Hi, I'm Becky. I'm a senior lecturer in our Institute of Education, Health and Life Sciences um, and I also facilitate our bridging module which brings people who've experienced homelessness and sometimes addiction into higher education. At least that's what we hope. Marvellous. And Hi, I'm Darren. I'm a student on Becky's course. Um, I'm currently under the uh, umbrella of Stone Pillow, the charity for homeless people, and I take part in the course with Becky. Excellent. It's great to know. So, um, Becky, we're going to start with you, just some extra information about the bridging course before we go any further. Um, what is it and how did it start? Um, a good question. Thank so... you very much. <laughs> I'll, I'll start with what is it and yep. work backwards. Yep. So it is a course that we co-created with the original cohort mm -hmm. of those coming out of um, homelessness. Um, and it runs for approximately 12 weeks, the official course, although we do a pre-course few months just so yeah. people get a feel for what university is going to be like. Is it like a try before you buy kind of situation? Kind of like that, yeah. yeah. Okay. So we get different lecturers to come and talk from different departments because mm. we wouldn't want to hog them all in our departments. No, no. Make, make sure we're being fair <laughs> and just talk a little bit about essay writing yeah. and what it means to be a student and things like that. And then officially... Um, it usually starts in January and runs till May when the mm -hmm. essay handing is, that dreaded, dreaded words. <laughs> um, and it is designed to develop academic skills, yeah. all the things you will need for university, critical writing, critical thinking, referencing. Mm, oh, the dreaded oh. referencing. Yeah. <laughs> all those things. But it's the academic skills are hung around the lived experience That's of the cool. people who participate. So yeah. you don't have to come with any traditional qualifications. Marvelous. Most of the people, not all, who engage with it have, for various reasons, disconnected from education at quite yeah. early ages. And we come from the, the basis that education and um, ability are not synonymous no but in this country especially they are often confused mm -hmm. and it's that idea that not everyone has had the opportunity to engage fully in yeah. education or maybe at the time we're not aware of how valuable it is mm. and that this is designed to give them a second chance because we really strongly believe that everybody deserves the second yeah. chance oh, that's such a good idea so was it your idea originally did you yeah. Was it your brainchild? So it started because my our head of department, Chris Smethurst, mm -hmm. and myself ran a resilient session originally for quite a lot of the people who were resident in Stone Pillow at the yeah. time. And I have to say, we were absolutely petrified <laughs> when we first went in because we're like, here's us to academics or people yeah. who like to think they're academics anyway. I know that's debatable <laughs> coming to talk to people who've had to overcome adversity to get here yeah. about resilience which is about overcoming adversity yep and the irony of that was <gasps> not lost on us <laughs> and so we were a bit worried that we were just going to come mm. and everyone would just think what are they talking about yeah but actually as I was listening to what the participants were saying I was just thinking wow this they're just so insightful mm. and we do we run resilience sessions with a lot of different people mm. and I have never seen people understand so quickly the concepts that we were talking about yeah. and relate them so completely to their lived experience to mm. make those connections it was yeah. incredible so I afterwards I said to them you know what you guys you could come to university. Yeah. And, and they looked at me like I was completely insane. <laughs> but I said, look, here's my mobile number. If you're interested, text me. And afterwards, and, and Darren will probably corroborate this, I, I just thought, what have I just done? Why would someone <laughs> who's coming out of homelessness have the courage to text some 
academic yeah. person who they don't know. Yeah, that's so I was thinking, quite oh, intimidating. I, I, was, I was thinking I really wished I'd asked for their phone numbers if they were interested, so yeah. I could have texted them. So I was just thinking, oh, well, we mm. can do it again. But that was on a Thursday, and by the Monday, seven people had texted uh-huh. me. So you'd be surprised how nosy we all are. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, that was how it started. And those guys helped to shape what the content should be. That's excellent. It's flexible content and it changes Mm. a little bit every time. I suppose it probably has to, doesn't it? Yeah. But they really have, like, the bridging module is used within our foundation here and things like Mm. that, integrated foundation and things like that now. And it we kind of... They, nobody knows that a lot of the content for that was created by yeah. people coming out. That's really cool. Well. There's something that I love. Yeah, quite about right. the bottom-up approach mm. of that. It's very cool. I like it. So uh, what type of student is the course for? Darren, would you like to answer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hi, I'm Darren. Um, I'm officially homeless. Um, and a very brief history of mine is that um, following the, the death of my long-term partner mm. of 20 years, um, I hit the alcohol very, very badly yeah. um, and uh, became totally uh, dependent on it as uh, addicted. Mm. Um, consequently, lost my house, my job, money, um, everything, and, and, and basically rendered myself homeless because yeah. of the addiction. Um, and after uh, several attempts by my family and friends to try and get me some form of help or treatment, I was lucky enough to um, be admitted by um, Stone Pillow, the charity for homelessness. Yep. Um, and through those on, on their rehabilitation programme, we were offered the opportunity to, to come to the university and, um, and, and try out these, these taster sessions that it was sold to us as. Yeah. Um, and um, uh, quite a few of us took it up. Um, and I think basically from the first time I met Becky on the um, the initial day, which was the resilience day, mm-hmm. um, I, I, I just thought to myself, yeah, this is this is a bit of me. I, I really want to do this. Um, uh, uh, I, I don't know if people can tell by my voice or or even the filming that um, I am fifty six years old. So I thought, mm, university, all those little whippersnappers there, and me running around with my Zimmer frame or hobbling <laughs> around with my Zimmer frame. Um, but um, I, I've always been academically minded, even though I haven't used that through through my career. I've, I've yeah. been a, a people manager and um, a problem solver. At, at, Quite, quite good jobs. I've had a very good jobs actually, but never really carried on with my academic studies. Um, and I thought, yeah, I want to try this. And, yeah. and, and as we've got further into it, and um, we're trying out um, each week, is there have been um, guest speakers and we've been trying different things. Um, I love it. I, I really do love it. I love everything about it. I love the studying. Mm. Not so much the homework. Definitely no. not the referencing. Referencing no, no, sucks. No, no, referencing is it's just no, I'm not, not, not playing referencing. I don't like that. Um, nearly, made, nearly made you give up. I, I, last week, last week I was prepared to, to give up purely because of the referencing and bibliography. It's, referencing is no, a pain. I, not funny. I feel you there. Really like, not funny. No, it's not. But, um, but again, we had um, a good study day on Saturday. Uh, normally it's a uh, weekday evening at the moment, but mm-hmm. we had a... An extraordinary study day Saturday with um, another le- another lecturer came in with Becky, and showed us some tools that we didn't know how to use on um, Word, ah, um, which has made it a whole different ball game. And I'm <laughs> back in love with it again. Oh. So yes, as in love um, as you can be. With referencing. Oh, as in love as I can yeah. be with referencing. But it's but but the course love. in general, yeah. Um, you know, we we've, we've been told to start thinking about what we want to do for our main um, essays. Yeah. Um, and and a part of my my background is theatrical, TV production, stage management, cool. bloody bloody blah. blah, blah. Yeah. Um, but we had uh, the lecturer came in uh, about sociology, and mm. and that was it. That that was changed changed everything. Mm. So do you know what you're going to write about? Is this um, are you allowed I'm, I'm, to disclose it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, my essay this time, I'm probably going to do it on passengers travelling with a disability. Oh, excellent. Um, so that's that's something that I did actually. Um, do a lot of research into when I was mm-hmm. working at the travel hubs that I did, which was a ferry company in Southampton, Gatwick Airport. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, I actually helped develop their um, PRM mm-hmm. uh, system, passengers with reduced mobility. Ah. So, so it's something that I know about. Yeah, um, that'd be really interesting. Yeah, and again, the research and the facilities. Uh, I mean, the the, the the facilities here and Bognor mm. Campus. Uh, the, the, the bus travel, um, and, and I just love being here. I, I, love, yeah. I, I actually love being part of the university. Um, and, and, and I suppose I was just saying to Becky earlier on, 
being of, of my age, it's quite nice because people actually hold the door open for me. <laughs> 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 quite important. Is, um, that the, is that with the Zimmer fame? That's that probably that? because of the Zimmer so fame. You've got to get it through. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's quite bulky. Yeah, but um, but but I'm I'm really enjoying the course, and um, it, it's amazing part of the recovery program for me personally, yeah. and and the opportunity of this particular mm. bridging module is it's incredible. Oh. It really is. Can Must I, be quite nice can to I hear. Ask you something? Do you think so? We thought a lot about where to run it mm. because we we could have gone to like stone pillow houses, but to us, it was really important that students who never thought they would ever come to university walk through our doors. Mm. Mm. So we run it on this one runs on the Bogner campus. Yeah. And we, cho- we we chose that for that very reason. But I just mm. wonder what you think, Darren, about whether that's what the best way to go with it absolutely i don't think uh, personally i don't think it would work in um within the homes or anything like that because you you may not take it seriously or the atmosphere may not be academic enough yeah you need the separation yes i think i think that's what it is Mm. and and i I keep saying personally because i don't want to be speaking on other people's behalves but um i i love being here i love everything about the atmosphere Mm. um the facilities um you can focus, whereas if we, if we were in our own homes, I, I don't think we'd focus properly. No, there would be too many to. distractions. Yeah. The other residents that weren't on the course would be within the home. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think it would work. It, I think the only way to do it is the way it's running now within the campus, whether it be here at Chichester or mm-hmm. um, in Bognor. And, of course, we can use the two. It was, it was really hard during COVID because oh, we had man. to run it. We managed to just about source laptops for everyone oh. through the university and through Stone Pillow. I did that on the first lockdown. I did this mad. I, I drove to the university, picked up two laptops, drove to Bognor just before there was like that curfew time, wasn't there? Oh, After which yeah. it was lockdown. And I look, we were you handling, got it. Yeah. Nice. And then there was real problems because the houses didn't have um, Wi-Fi. Oh, no. So it was really hard for them to do the online Yeah, that's stuff. a struggle. So this is how keen. Like, I, we love our students from the bridging module because they, you guys are just so hungry to learn. You know, other students, they need a little bit of persuasion yeah. <laughs> to learn, whereas these guys, they realised that if they went and sat on the wall outside the locked LRC in Bognor, yeah. they could get on the Wi-Fi there. Wow. So they were going and sitting, writing essays oh. on the wall. That is great. That's dedication That's as well. That's dedication, yeah. isn't it? An inspiration to all our students, <laughs> I <would> say. <laughs> but I, I, th- I think that it, 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 it really does give us a sense of um, purpose. Um, sorry. It, it, it's something that we... It, it's something to look forward to. I mean, we, we look forward to... Uh, as, as well as the social side of it, the, mm. the academic side of it, it's it's a challenge, and 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 to be quite honest with you, it's it, we are we're all we're all capable of doing it. We've yeah. we've spent so much of our time devoted to our addiction. Why not channel those energies somewhere exactly. slightly more productive? Yeah, definitely. And, and we are capable. It's just a case of getting on and doing it. Yeah. And and, and this is the perfect opportunity to do it. It's a really cool opportunity mm. as well. It is really. It's a good thing, mm. um, Darren. If you don't mind me asking. Mm-hmm. Um, what has been your experience with homelessness? Okay, it was through addiction. Mm. Um, I This is my fifth attempt now at um, getting myself sorted out yeah. away from addiction. Um, and the, the longest period that I had from my partner dying was five years. I was at Gatwick Airport yeah. with a very good job. Um, and and I, I was doing really well there. Um, and, and drink was under control, although I was drinking. Mm. Um, but uh, suddenly, without warning, one Friday evening I was going home from work and I was phoned and told not to come back because Monday morning uh, the budget had run out, the project oh. was finished oh, no. and um, the job was basically had ceased. Mm. Uh, I hit the drink really heavily, yeah. um, left my rented accommodation that I was at mm. in near Gatwick, came back to Southampton, which is my hometown, yeah. stayed with my sister... Um, I couldn't stay with my parents because my old bedroom had now been turned into their um, ensuite bathroom. Wow, so my bedroom doesn't exist anymore. It Can't sleep a, in a bath. No, it would have been a sofa mm. or, or whatever. Um, mm. And then consequently living with my sister, although she has a, a decent-sized house, sofa surfing, I was almost the catalyst 
that caused the breakup of the family, oh dear. which couldn't go on anymore, by which time my drinking was totally out of control. Mm. It was waking to sleeping non-stop, no yeah. break. Um, and she couldn't cope anymore, the family couldn't cope anymore, and uh, she marched me off to the doctors, who then referred me to CGL, Change, Grow, Live, mm -hmm. um, an addiction therapy yeah. group. Um, and... And basically, that's the, I was then referred to another place in Portsmouth, um, Anna, um, a treatment centre, and, and they were able, able to medicate as well. So I had the, the detox drugs mm -hmm. to, to get me down from the, the withdrawal. And finally, Stone Pillow, which moved me to Bognor Regis. Yeah. And um, the, the, the house called Sands mm -hmm. in, in Bognor Regis. Um, and and, and that's, where, that's where all of this started. Yeah. This is all part of their rehab programme and... And, and moving forward yeah. through life. So so technically speaking, if I were to relapse or, or, or to mess up tomorrow, mm -hmm. um, I would technically be, again, homeless. Yeah. I have no home, I have no money, I have no job, I have mm -hmm. no car, no transport, I have nothing. Yeah. I have nowhere to go. Um, it, it's just only through the grace of God and mm -hmm. um, stone pillow yeah. that I have the means to have a roof over my head and a bed to sleep in and yeah. food in my tummy yeah. and um and then the, the university for for keeping me occupied with mm. with something which is pretty much my my life at the moment yeah it, it, it's keeping me sane yeah so yeah. do you think the bridging course is helping to kind of shape what you want to do oh, when it absolutely. ends yeah, do you know I'm... what you want to do when it ends um I, well it's been suggested yeah. that i go into um because i'm also um and I'm studying to actually have a, a formal qualification in teaching as well. Oh, marvellous. Um, so it, it's been suggested that I go into counselling, which is, cool. uh, I've always dealt with people, people management. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, despite what some others may say close to me, I am a very caring person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you are. That's why I say despite what others say yeah, close, yeah, yeah. close to me. You've um, got a cover all Well, I have a, a, a ferocious sense of humour, which sometimes um, comes out the wrong way. <laughs> but um, but uh, but having been through such uh, diversity myself, yeah, um, and and my age as well, experience of life, yeah, um, and my willingness to give back—that's probably the big thing. Yeah, um, we we've just done something today with the, with the other students, and um, and and I've said to them, please ask me what you feel you want to, because I will be as transparent as possible. Mm -hmm. And and any time something like this or what we did earlier with the other students comes along to help out with their lectures, I will give whatever I can back because yeah. I think that I've taken enough. Oh, Darren's sweet. amazingly generous with his time. Yeah. Well, you've he given up your time to, to come and listen to all my questions. So but thank you. It, no, it's, <laughs> I, 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 if I can be of any help, I will always do it now. Yeah. Oh. You'd be a great counsellor. <laughs> 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 Cracking. Um, Becky, back to you. And Darren, feel free to chip in because mm. it's obviously about the course that you're currently doing. Um, what's your favourite thing about creating and teaching the course? Ooh. Oh, well, my favourite thing is meeting the Darrens, everybody <gasps> on the, the course. Darrens of the world. Um, it is the... So it's my reason why, mm. do you know? Yeah. we Sometimes we teach students and we're not sure that... That, that there is a complete point to <laughs> everything. That, is it because that, they don't reference properly? Play? That could be it. It's yeah. a referencing. Yeah, it's always a referencing. I can't help it. To keep thing. referring to the references. It's, oh, it's a thing, Darren. It's a thing, <laughs> referencing. <laughs> um, so the favourite thing is just every week is different. Mm. We spend a lot of time laughing. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, and just, do you know the thing that I love most of all is watching people unfurl mm. so these brains that have been dormant for various reasons for long and you, all you have to do is just open that door and everyone flies yeah oh. and you can't you can't touch that no there are there are no shrinking violets in the class really are there but everybody contributes um, we're all very comfortable with each other yeah and I think because of all of us we've all got different backgrounds but mm. similar sort of path really yeah. and um and I, I don't think that we're actually that inhibited are we we no. just <laughs> <don't> um, <laughs> oh, I, I tried to put that as politely as I could <laughs> um but um I, I, I don't think we we do hold back and, and there have been some lively discussions yeah. um 
But on the other hand, we all do we do take it seriously, but we do have a laugh as well. Good. And and every, everybody on the course really does enjoy it. Mm. it, it it's it's a lovely atmosphere. That's really but good. But we're all very open and honest with each other as well. Nobody, there's no competition, mm. but there's nobody shy or hiding. or uh, th Nobody's made to feel excluded. Yeah. If, if somebody feels that they're not academically up to scratch, Becky's there straight away. Um, it's, <laughs> the, 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 the support the is incredible. <laughs> we, we support each other. And, and Becky yeah, and, and the other the guys that have come in to help us, we, we've never felt inadequate, ever. Oh, that's really nice. Mm. Do you know what the other day that I love, mm -hmm. apart from the day when everyone stands over with their certificates and says things like, I've never completed anything in my life oh. before. But what I love is the day that people get their student cards. Oh, and I remember yeah. the first time that ever happened with the very first group, I remember they walked out of, we actually did it here and they went into red, red student registry and, and got it. Yep. And they came out and they went, we're students now. Mm -hmm. We're not homeless anymore. No. And it's about how you're perceived. Yeah. And it's about self-perception. And there's something about having a card yeah. that proves it. We knew it already, mm. but there's something with that card. The card literally opens doors. Yeah, literally. Well. And, and free bus journeys. <laughs> yes. And free bus journeys. But, but, but as you, you also pointed out earlier on about the, the feeling of worth and belonging, yeah. all of a sudden you think, oh my goodness, I'm part of this university. Yeah. I actually belong somewhere. I yeah. exist it's massive. Oh, that's really mm. nice. It's really funny feeling. Not yeah. funny. It's it's you, you suddenly. It, it's not overwhelming as collapse on the floor and. No, but, but emotionally. Yeah, you, you suddenly think to yourself, "Oh my goodness, I, I yeah. actually am part of something now that mm. I belong and I, I have a purpose again." Yeah. Oh, which is quite a big thing. Really See is. why I love it? How could you not love it? I no no I feel you. I'm there. <laughs> I'm I'm getting there. Mm. I just yeah, 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 yeah. I'll tell you one thing though is. It's probably been the most humbling experience of my life. Yeah. And it's made me realise, we've been talking a lot this afternoon about stereotypical views of homelessness, mm -hmm. and it has shattered every single one of those yep. that I ever have. And I sit here with these really clever, funny, yeah. quick guys, guys, guys meaning women and men. Yes. And um, I just, I think... One paycheck away. Yeah. On just, it could be, it's really easy to think it couldn't be me, mm -hmm. but it could be any of us. Yeah. And that has been such an eye opener. I think me. that was, um, if I could bring this in, um, how quickly that amazing email came back from one of the students today. Um, and, and it was, it was purely incredible. It was mm. such a long email, just thanking Becky and mm. myself. Thanking you more, actually, Darren. Um, I feel like you come as a team now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, yeah, yeah. We are a team, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, and they just said, it, it's blown away mm. their preconceptions or whatever you want yeah. to call it of, of homelessness mm. and, and the stereotypical view. Yeah. And they, they said they're, they're looking at it in a whole different light because, yeah, it's you, you can't judge people. I mean, we no. all do it. We're all guilty of judging. Yeah. And and there I will speak for other people. We are all guilty to some degree of judging circumstances or, or, or situations. Uh, and that, for, for me, that email today has made the whole day worthwhile. Good on you, Darren. Mm -hmm. Darren was amazing. We were talking to social, first year social work students. And oh, okay. Darren was amazing. Oh. Well done. So, I, so and and go, just winding back a bit. The other Darren is bored of this story now, but I'm going to keep telling it. Do it because I haven't heard it. Um, so. Yes, exactly. So you like? To do it. <laughs> no, unfortunately not. Like, oh, <laughs> um, so um, this this strange thing happened to to me. Just, so I guess. Four and a half, three and a half years ago, four years ago, we we li I live in Chichester, and we have a. So when my our kids were five and six, we pulled them out of school, gave up our jobs, rented out our house, bought a camper van, went travelling around Europe. That's very cool. That's very cool, isn't it? Yeah. I say that because it's cool, and then it ups my cool, you know, states because I'm not it's particularly it's cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um and. That camper van, even though our kids are now 22 and 24 and they were five and six at the time, is still outside our house. And literally, probably from our front door to the window just behind you. Yeah. So a few, a meter, a few meters. And for two weeks, 
somebody homeless was living in our van and we didn't notice. Wow. And we only noticed when we went to pack up our van to go away for the weekend mm. and we found all his stuff in it. Yeah. And so we took his stuff out and left it on the side and went camping. And all weekend, I was just haunted by this image of someone turning the corner and their temporary home being gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it just stayed with me. And I remember thinking then, if I can do anything to... It was the invisibility. Yeah. How can they have been... That close to us, and, and we didn't, didn't notice know. because uh, because we weren't looking. Yeah, no, I guess And not. it's about opening our eyes, mm. and that I just found that if there was anything, even tiny, that I could do to to make pe to make ho homeless n homeless people and homelessness more vi visible, mm. I would try and do it. And I guess these things always have to be driven by a personal yeah absolutely emotion. I thought you're, you're doing know. a pretty good job of it, Becky. <laughs> Yeah. So I and, <laughs> and yeah, I wanted so. I that, but agree. that idea of invisibility comes up mm. a lot when you talk about homelessness with people. And um, we went to a big smart dinner for this project, which had lots of vice chancellors there in the British Academy. Jane came with yeah. us, our vice chancellor. She was one of the people there, and there was all these vice chancellors sitting around the table. And I'm not saying that academics like to talk. But they quite like telling us things. <laughs> and, they, and so everyone was talking around the table and, and talking about what their universities did. And then they turned, we took two students, um, Phil and Lucy, with us from the project, mm -hmm. who were both students at the university now. And everyone turned to them and said, so, you know, what are your views on it? What has it done for you? And Lucy said to this group of people who had all been talking a lot, um, well, I was invisible. And it made me visible. Mm. And there was complete silence around the table. And I, I hold that. I, I will never forget that. No. Because that kind of there in the palm of her hand, she said it. Ooh. Yeah. Don't need to do a big old spiel. Not really. Mm. No. Not really. Not for something like that. So, yeah. So, anyway, sorry. That was a bit of a... It was because we were talking about invisibility and yeah no it's okay it was a <laughs> tangent you are fine um so how can people access the course uh well I, it through? yeah i i accessed it because i was guided by um stone pillow yeah um who, who's, who they offered us the opportunity mm -hmm. to come along to the, the open day with becky um and and, and basically over to you really for the actual yeah so the behind the scenes. <clears throat> to access it you basically just need to email me that's the main criteria um yeah so we for this so we run the bridging model not just for people who've been affected by homelessness we've also just started one for care leavers yeah which is the same idea, but of course the the content is, is slightly different and we mm -hmm. work on that with them. And we've also run it for asylum seekers. So um, when we get a big enough cohort, and when I say big enough, we never like to go over eight to ten because we need that intense support. So yeah. when we have like about eight people, we just start running it. Nice. Basically. And if any students are interested in getting involved, we would love to have them with us yeah. supporting mentoring I think the transition into university can be complicated so having familiar faces yeah around no, it's nice can really help but it's a so we either through kind of homelessness charities or just through us and our department really yeah. we've got a from adversity to university uh web page now uh -huh. so hey, if you want hey. yeah hey, hey. Hello. Not that I'm pushing that or anything quite right so yeah we've got all the information on there if people are interested in Excellent. finding out more that's very very cool and how's it funded Ooh, okay. So, so that's quite complicated. Ooh, okay. And Jane <laughs> would probably say, "Well, it doesn't make any money," which is true. Mm -hmm. But that is not the point. No. No. So, it's about. So I hand on heart believe one that education is a right, not a privilege, yep. and that we need to break down all these barriers to people who haven't come from a private education yeah. accessing higher education. So we with the charities that we work with we charge 200 pounds per person mm -hmm. so 
it's it's not so much about that that covers some of the costs but it's more about putting value on it yeah so I used to run a children's center and we used to have free courses and no one used to come and as soon as we charged two pounds which they had to pay the week before it was full so there's something about putting value Mm -hmm. that there's a value to it people get in charities people get offered lots of freebies handouts yeah so it, that's not valued really. So it's, it's funded. So Stone Pillow, um, when we first did it, they created a Just Giving page. Yeah. We had 10 initial students. We needed £2,000 mm-hmm. to get 10 of them doing the course. Yep. The Just Giving page went live at 5 o'clock on a Monday afternoon. We needed £2,000. And by 2 o'clock on Tuesday afternoon, we had £2,400. Excellent. That's how much... Blimey. People think it's a good idea. Yeah. It's something concrete. You can see the difference. Even if people don't go on to, to go into uni, and they don't have to, that's not the pressure. Yeah. Most people have either gone on to volunteer or mm-hmm. to get a job. It's something to put on your CV. And it, I don't know, Darren, you'll have to jump in here, but I think it rebuilds self-esteem and Absolutely, self-confidence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and I mean, ultimately, I, I guess the goal is to go on to university. But if you don't... Um, what you gain out of this through um, rebuilding social skills, yeah. contact with outside world, other people, um, a new rebuilding of your life, um, academic skills. Uh, uh, th- 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 this course in itself can change you as a person. Absolutely. With, without actually going on to a specified subject at uni. Yeah. Um, th- the course in itself is just, it just builds you. Yeah. It, it repairs you. Oh. It, it helps you. It's yeah, this 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 course is fantastic. That's it excellent. Really is. Um, okay, so Darren, pretend that Becky's not here for a brief moment. <gasps> oh, dear. what's she like as a lecturer? It, I must admit, <laughs> remember he's buying the coffee. Abs- <laughs> <laughs> you you couldn't wish for a better atmosphere, and that's obviously mm-hmm. created by the lecturer. Yeah, it's easy going. Um, all the academic backup and support we need is of course there. Yeah. But on the other hand, um, not that Becky or any other lecturers would be condescending or patronising or treat anybody like children. You absolutely do not feel unworthy at all. You, All of us, and I'm again speaking for everybody now in the I feel class, like you can. Um, we, we feel part of a unit mm-hmm. which has been created and continually supported by Becky. Yeah. And, and 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 for that reason, I hate to say it, but I'm singing her praises. Mm. Yeah. And, um, oh and, and, and I'm and, glad and, you're recording this. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and in all You've got seriousness, it literally on tape. In all seriousness, quite rightly so, because yeah. um, it, it, it's a huge part of it. If, mm. if if we felt not threatened, but if we felt uncomfortable, yeah, be a not good experience. enough, or yeah. I don't know, oh, I'm never going to get through this. It, it, there is just that does not exist. That's really at all. Good. It doesn't. And do you feel part of kind of the overall university community? Oh, good. hell yeah. Yeah, <laughs> excellent. Good. I might be the oldest, but I'm not the, uh, the most uh, unparticipating one here. Yeah. Is there anything that you want to say to Becky? Apart from your coffee order. Oh, apart from the coffee order. Um, <laughs> I know, medium latte. <laughs> indeed. I, I'd, I, I guess it's as good an opportunity as any, it's to, it's to thank you for this initiative. And, and without you and the input that you give, that this would not exist and I would not be here and and well for some of us we wouldn't have much to look forward to no, I'm going to cry it's, now it's, it really is quite a powerful thing that you've done here and 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 are, are creating and developing it's amazing thank you Darren oh. <laughs> okay, it's going to make I me mean, cry Right. Wouldn't, there would be no point to it if you guys weren't there. Oh, see, so this yeah. is, we, we oh, love God. each other so much. But can I just say, though, I meant it when I said it is my reason why. Like, there's some things you do, and they're the reason why you do the job you do. And I've said that to Chris as well. And I have to say, I am not the only lecturer. We have a lot of lecturers who come. And some of them are a bit nervous at first, but every single one, once they come once, they're like, when can I come back? Oh, yes. I've never met a group of students like that. So there's been real buy-in and support from the whole university, and I think that's really important to know, isn't it? Because it would be no yeah. point if in our little bubble it all went really well, but as mm. soon as you step into anywhere else in the university, you felt like you mm. weren't yeah, students. But be the same. I, mm. I think I would say that has never. Oh God, been no, the case. no. Well, look outside the um, the library just now. Uh, a, a lecturer that came and did one of the days with us. Mm-hmm wearing a mask and everything and I was just waiting for Becky again and um <laughs> True. and uh, and this person just came up and said 
Darren, is it Darren? And I said, yeah. And she went, are you, are you one of Becky's students? And I said, yeah. And she said, I thought I recognised you. And it, the, the, it was one of the lectures that had been just oh, for one lesson. My God. And we stood there and we spoke. And she said, I've seen you in and out of the library here several times, mm. but um, you've always been sort of like rushing, so I've never managed to, <laughs> how are you going? How's it going? Oh, What's that's so plan? nice. And I thought, and I actually thanked her afterwards. I mean, we had a chat about mm. uh, what's been going on and everything. And I said afterwards, thank you so much for recognising me. That really meant a lot. It's and, and, and because you're I, famous, Darren. Well, I'm based at Bogner <laughs> campus, but I do come over here quite a lot to use the library and everything. Yeah. And, and I thought that, that really touched me. I thought, yeah. bless your heart for recognising me. And, and my name as well. Yeah. And Becky wasn't there or anything. And I thought that was lovely. That was So yes, you yeah. do feel part, very much part of it. Further hammering home our point that you are a name, not a number. <coughs> yeah. Well, yeah. there we are. <laughs> I think it is. I, I do think the University of Chichester has a heart. Mm. Mm. And I think these projects work because yeah, of that. they do. Oh, this is the nicest episode I think I've ever recorded. <laughs> it's a bit of a love-in. It really <laughs> is. It's a, it's a Darren Becker University of Chichester love-in. I know. It feels like I'm just having a big hug and it's really, really nice. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. a bit like our classes, really. Oh, it's really mm. lovely. Uh, is there anything that either of you want to add at all that you feel like you want to say or I haven't asked about? I don't know. I think you don't have to. This is much, I, this I is would like to say, question. though, because I don't know if I say it enough, and you can feed this back to everyone else, that you guys truly are... My inspiration. Oh. Mm. We're all going to be crying by the end of this. I think we are, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I don't... Thank you. <laughs> I don't know what to <laughs> well, say to It's that. true, because you just... Do you know, it's easy for me to, to come from my nice house and go and lecture. I, I'm beginning to understand, but never will completely understand, the mountains you have had to climb to get to where you are. But then, having said that, as I said to you after the lecture today... Um, also, we do feel like we've been given so many opportunities. Well, I myself, personally, why on earth don't I give something back? Because in giving something back, it's also giving me a feeling of worth and, yeah. and purpose. So it's, it's a win-win, isn't it? Mm. And, and, and in that respect, we, we can just all pat ourselves on the back. We can. <laughs> so our biggest ambition, and it hasn't worked yet, but we are living in hope, Yes. we travel hopefully, is that other universities will do the same thing. Put it out to the universe and it yeah. will happen. Mm. So that is, we've created a toolkit yeah. for other universities that is that free for them to download. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can you it's, imagine this, in two years' time we're speaking from somewhere around the world? Yeah. That, that little Global. dark night where we were sat in Chichester, you and me doing our little <laughs> That was the day. In the room with the funky curtains. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Who oh, never thought we'd be yeah, on the top floor of days. Trump Towers making this broadcast? <laughs> <laughs> really can imagine that. Yes. Okay. It'd be great if other universities do it. It would it's be amazing, and I think if you we know. Can do it, anybody can do I was it. I was doing a bit of a, a number counting, and I think that these guys on this group will mean that we're up to over thirty students Excellent. from coming out of homelessness and addiction who have yeah. gone through it. Um, and at the moment, we've got, I think, five at uni. Next year, potentially, there'll be four people applying, four or five. Excellent. But these are, it, it doesn't matter. So if it changes one person's life, it's worth doing. But yeah. well, these are small numbers. But imagine if every uni in the country had four or five people who've been affected by homelessness doing the bridging module and starting uni. That starts being numbers yeah. that change things. And can grow into something Yeah, massive. there's that thing about the transformational power of education. And I see it in your guys' faces. You're like, oh, actually, mm. this is really interesting. And you know, the thing I loved the most was the other day we were having a critical discussion. And I think it was you, Dan, said, well, I, I'm going to say this, but I can't back it up with research. Oh, yet. Right, yeah. <laughs> yet. I'm like, yet. <laughs> reference and you're there. Yes, exactly. everything's fine. You can say whatever you like as long as you can reference it. Absolutely. Yeah. It yeah. does change the way that you speak and think and yeah. and, and, and present your point and, and, and even argue, how you argue with people. It does. I will always win now, one way or another. Is that I because will. you talk to lampposts? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. no, that's exactly why. Um, okay, final few questions. We're nearly there. Well done, everybody. Only a few tears along the way. Um, why should people do the bridging course? 
I think that's pretty evident by the, uh, the evidence that we've given today and uh, the, Thank you. the examples. All the further references that you've given me throughout. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, your if you point just check the bibliography. Then, uh, yes, yes. If you provide me with a bibliography <laughs> at the end, we'll make sure that it. I'll uh, read it all out. <laughs> I think it, 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 it offers so much. Um, yeah. you, you wouldn't imagine what, what could come from this. Um, I certainly didn't expect to be doing this when I started at Stone Pillow and it gives you so much to look forward to it opens all sorts of avenues it, it makes you more confident uh, it's not just the academic side no, it, it's, it's it, it, it just changes your your outlook on, on life yeah. your feeling within society your your inclusion your your belonging however you want to put it it's mm. it, it's just well worth doing oh, that's fantastic it really is and i good I, advertisement <laughs> Because <laughs> obviously I'm going to have the last word on this one. <laughs> so uh, I saw that look. Um, I I also think slowly, very slowly, it's changing perceptions within our university itself. So the fact that Darren and the guys come and talk to social work students and other students, the fact that they've been open about things but are on the uni campus, and of course no one. No one's going to know that they were homeless, but they're here yeah. and it's happening. And that must change views on homelessness and break down stereotypical views in general. So I think the ripple effects are quite hard to measure. Yes, actually. Yeah, yeah, I, that's, that's really true, actually. That was quite um, uh, poignant what that person said in their email today about um, the, the, their whole outlook has completely changed just on that one lecture today. One lecture. Because of the way that the questions that they asked, the way yeah. that the, the response, the way... Your that, honesty. Uh, but I said I am quite transparent. I mean, mm. some people, for, for, for very good reason, um, whether it's um, for, for work or whatever, would prefer anonymity. Yeah. Um, and, and initially I thought I would, but now I don't give a monkey. So I really... But I, I have nothing to yeah. hide, so... If if giving back this information can help in any way at all, I'm prepared to do it. And and to hear that the response from that email, uh, has changed their Good. outlook as of today. Yeah. And and and, and that's the ripple effect yeah. I guess that you're talking about. It it, it, so it it has happened. It might be small. Of course, it's going to be small when it starts. But but you never know. It, it's happening. All it takes is one person to make a change. It's happening. Yeah. So, yeah, it's. And those people are going to go out to work. Mm. And when they yeah. go work with other people, they're going to change their views. Yeah. So. It's like, yeah, like you said, it's the ripple effect, isn't mm. it? And you'll never know how far it reaches, no. but it will just keep going. Yeah. Oh, this is great. <laughs> um, so, uh, well, both of you, um, that's a fight as to who gets the last word, I guess. Um, oh, Challenge accepted. Because <laughs> that's the last question for you two. Um, what key thing would you like the listeners to take away from this episode and learn about homelessness? Oh, I think I can have the last one there because I almost did it in the lecture this afternoon. You did. <laughs> <laughs> Is don't, don't, try not to prejudge. Because don't have any preconceptions of yeah. homelessness. Um, be open-minded and um, what's, what's the word I'm actually... Non-judgmental. Be, be non-judgmental. Nice. Keep an open mind. Yeah. Because you just don't know either what's facing you or what you could be facing. Yeah, exactly. Very good. Um, you can have the last word. Am I not have the last to say word. anything? Unfortunately, I'll actually be having the last word. Oh, so I, can I just say? Can I, I just want to say one thing because it is my 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 favourite saying of the moment because yes. I heard it once and I just thought that sums up what we're trying to do, yeah. which is that while intelligence and ability are universally distributed across throughout the world, mm -hmm. opportunity is not. No. And if we can do the tiniest thing to start changing that, then we are doing something worthwhile. Becky wins. <laughs> <laughs> Always does. Oh, damn it. Um, so uh, if anybody wants to join the conversation or contact the university, you can contact us on Instagram at University of Chichester or Twitter on at Chai Uni. You can email, th email us on studyhere at chai.ac.uk and join the conversation with hashtag Chai Uni. So thank you so much, Becky and Darren. This has been a, just an amazing episode to record. I've enjoyed every single second of it. Thank you. And I feel like I've learned a lot about the bridging course and a lot about homelessness oh. and how not to be judgy. It's nice. Yeah. Thank it's you good. so thank much. Thank you so much for coming. No, thank Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.